Hello and welcome to another LEGO Train Mock Showcase video. These are my Metro Liner coaches, once again, completely rebuilt. So I say once again because I did rebuild them from the standard kind of LEGO size when they fit on those 24 long base plate pieces to something around this length and they have been rebuilt to have a bit more detail. They are a bit longer in length overall and they are now powered minus the club car in the middle. Now this is all to go with my next coronation build, but that is not the focus, the coaches are the focus. So let's have a look at each coach. Now these coaches were built to kind of mirror the red coronation coaches I made, but these aren't supposed to be a kind of perfect replica. These are supposed to resemble the Metroliner coaches more so than the coronation coaches, but you again can see some resemblance. So this is a standard first class passenger coach and the only one I put minifigures inside of. It's not easy to actually get minifigures inside, especially with how I built the roof. Uh, speaking of the roof, I left it with all those exposed studs, so it still has that Metroliner sort of old look to it. I think it was wiser to kind of keep it like this and kind of go for that feel instead of having a bunch of smooth slope bricks on top. Because yes, you can modernise it, but I for one still think you can look at this and go, yeah, it's a Metroliner coach, it's pretty cool. One thing that really helped was having a nice thick black base, and this was good for two reasons. First of all, that's again nice and thick, so it's plenty sturdy for the entire coach to sit on. And two, it lifts the coach up just a little bit more. Whilst coaches aren't exactly the tallest things ever, it does make it easier to get the three lines across the side lined up accurately with the locomotive I have made for this. As you can see here, the centre of the roof is easily removable with loads of tiles and smooth surfaces for it to sit on, with only a few exposed studs for it to actually grip onto. That makes it much easier for me to grab it and take it off compared to having loads of studs and kind of wrestle with the roof in order to actually get it off. The battery box sits in the centre of the coach itself and isn't screwed in, so I can just lift this up and gain access straight away to the batteries. Something I learned from an old Smith Movies diesel video. Very nice idea, and I actually encourage this for other people who use power functions. Next coach in this rake is the kitchen coach. And this has the centre of it's kind of all walled up, and that's because there's an active kitchen in this coach. You wouldn't have a bunch of windows going on here when you've got a bunch of equipment and a bit of machinery, I suppose, going on on the inside. You could have windows and have them all boarded up, and that's what I did with my coronation coach. But this time around, I thought a nice plain wall would be a much nicer look. All the coaches are built up in the same way in terms of length and kind of overall construction. This coach does have a few original Metroliner stickers on some of the bricks. It's not too common, but you will see some more of these later on with other coaches. In the middle of each coach where there is the battery box, there is a small hole in the roof. This is for the actual brick built button to activate and deactivate the battery box. This is removed when it goes into storage, that way I don't accidentally kind of lean this up against the surface and it turns the battery on, therefore wasting the batteries themselves. And it's also a very special way to kind of hide that button so it fits in with the overall look of the coach. This is the same design I've got for all of my Metroliner coaches and the actual design feature itself is on the original Coronation coaches. The third coach and the one that sits in the middle, at least I think it looks really good when it sat in the middle, is the club car. Now this is the longest coach I've ever made, not just for the Metroliner Express. This is over 60 studs in length, and again has the same thick base and overall details and looks as the other coaches. It's still the club car, and I've tried to make sure to keep all of the original details, including having two layers, while the top layer is the passenger seats, and the bottom layer is the bedding and the sort of extra cosy area. I'm not actually sure what that's supposed to be, but I love that it exists, and I've been able to keep that there. As you can see, the roof can open up as it can with the original set. The top half, as I said a moment ago, is just a bunch of bland seats. And on the inside, we have a few beds, plus a few other extra details. And this is a bit weird to me. Again, this isn't something that you would see on British rolling stock. So if this is actually more common than I kind of realise it to be on American rolling stock, then fair enough, let me know in the comments section. I still think it's pretty cool that there are a bunch of coaches with two layers to them. And uh, yeah, so that's probably one of the reasons why this is one of my favourite coaches ever. I was tempted, you know, when I made the original Red Coronation coaches to try something like this, but it didn't seem right at all. I'm actually quite glad I didn't do that. It's more unique to the Metro Liner, and it's just a very cool piece. Coach number four in this rake is another passenger coach. 
and this does have a slightly different look to the first one. Unlike the original Coronation Coach where the windows are a bit more spread out, I've tried to move them a little bit closer together and whilst I still wanted a one stud gap between each window piece, couldn't quite get that working on the end. So thankfully I had a few smaller, thinner windows available and that is what I have going on the back side. I can identify which end of the coach is back and front because at the front of each coach there is the motor. That way, the motor being sat at the front of the coach means it's going forwards in that direction. And sitting at the end of the rake of coaches is the brake coach. Now, this is something that has a bit of artistic licensing. British Express coaches have a brake coach at the back. American Express lines do not. They have a caboose. So this is an American look, but also with a British design, if that makes sense. A combination of both, and it's still built up all in the same way as my other coaches. But the motor at the front, the functions all in the center, it's all just lovely. I think this is one of the better looking ones just because it has some thinner windows at the back. It's nice to be able to use a bunch of different shaped windows, especially when they're all solid pieces. It's more convenient, but it definitely has a bit more character to it. And there we go. Thank you all ever so much for watching. It was really cool to be able to play with these coaches again, get them back together, kind of look after them a bit more. And now that I have a small tub with all the Metroliner specific parts in them, it's nice to just, you know, kind of look back in a way. Whilst I've modernised these in its own way, it's still recognisable as a Metroliner coach, basically. And it's, again, one thing to kind of have the set, but it's another thing to have it as your own custom design, especially with a matching locomotive. And that is the next video to be coming out, so make sure you stick around for that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all ever so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.